Hey everyone, Mr. Shadig here, teacher at Highland Park Elementary. As always, so privileged to be here with you. We are going to have a wonderful day ahead of us. We're going to be talking about um, some numbers. So we're going to get into some, a number talk to activate our brains. We're going to dive into some fractions where we're going to be able to play around with the idea of how to find equivalent fractions or mixed numbers and how we turn those into top-heavy fractions. And then we're going to finish out with a game called Fraction Frenzy. So we have a lot of fractions in front of us. So. Let's kind of dive into activating that brain, right? Having what at sometimes we can call a number talk, but also this idea of putting forth ways to get our brain going. I like to do this by using a deck of cards first. So if you have that, please feel free to get a deck of cards. And all you need is a deck of cards with the digits one through nine, okay? So you're just gonna need one through nine in here. And you can play this with a whole group of people to get going and get that brain thinking. We're going to be using all of our operations that you are familiar with. By operations, again, remember I'm talking about the idea of addition or subtraction, multiplication, and division. So however you want to use this, right, you can use it in just addition or subtraction, or if you want to use all of them, if you're feeling comfortable with it, by all means, do it. So here's how it works. We're going to take our deck of cards, and you're just going to have to trust me on this one. And we're going to flip over the first two cards so we have a seven and we have an eight so I have just made with seven and eight our target number 78 now the object of this to kind of get ourselves going and thinking is we want to use these operations to get as close as we can to 78 and we're gonna do that now with a series of more cards so I'm gonna draw four more cards and you could do this with three cards if you really want the challenge I like four it makes it a lot uh, makes me feel a little more calm so nine is gonna be our first number we can use and then it looks like we have another nine Ooh, this, okay we might be getting lucky here and we have a five and then our last number that we draw is Seven. So we actually have some pretty large numbers that could come in handy. Now the object again, as I said, to activate ourselves and get ourselves thinking here is we're going to use these four digits in any way we want using any of these operations to get as close to 78 as we can. So I'm going to just play around with that first and see what I can do and show you some examples and also give you an opportunity to be thinking of like how might you do it. So let's see here. I'm going to start with these two digits and I'm gonna start with 99 I'm gonna put them together and make a, a number out of it so 99 and that's one option I could do and now I'm gonna start thinking about well how do I get to 78 let's see here well let's say I took 99 and then I subtracted the answer to 5 times 7 see what I did there I used there's 5 and 7 right you can only use each digit once so there's 5 and 7 so let's see uh, 5 times 7 is 35 so 99 minus 35 would be 64 right so my goal was to get as close to 78 as I could I used I got to 64 using the, my numbers that way there's one option maybe you have some other options let's see what else we could try so 64 was one way, I'll try to keep that there. But let's play around. And again, the whole fun in this is that I want you thinking about which way would you do this? Like how would you put this together? Uh, let's see here. What if I took, we're just gonna try something out. Let's take nine, let me change our colors for this one. Let's take nine. Okay, I'm really trying to change my color, I promise. Let's take 9 and multiply it by 7 first. So 9 times 7. So that would be 63. Okay, so those digits are used. Let's see, what else could I do? Uh, what if I took 63 now and I added 9 more? So that would be 72. And then I added 5 more. That would be 77. So that was a lot better. I got even closer that time, right? So see, the first time I tried it, I played around, I got 64. The second time I got 77. So let's just try one more. I'm gonna put out some new numbers for us. So again, flipping over our cards. So the first one is a seven. So our target number is going to be 75. Okay, so there's the target number 75. 
And then we're going to flip over four cards. I'm going to do that real quick for you. So I just flipped them over. You got to trust me. I did. I flipped them over. We have four, two, six, and seven. And again, we can use addition, multiplication, subtraction, division in any way. You can also combine. So I want you to go ahead and give that one a go and see what you can do. Get yourself activated. Play around with those numbers. What's the best way to do it? And as soon as you think you found some good solutions, let's go ahead and get our materials ready because we're going to be diving into some fractions. Thanks. All right, so here we are talking about this idea of equivalent fractions, right? Like this is our equivalent fraction and that keyword equivalent. It's a really strong one to know. And this is going to be really helpful in all of the things that we do, adding, subtracting a fraction, sums and differences of them. Knowing equivalent fractions can be really helpful with some of those problems as well as just understanding this concept of what does equivalent mean because it's not just fractions that we see equivalent we see it everywhere right so just this first breakdown equivalent for me it's always that idea that we're talking about the same value of something but it looks different i think that's the easiest way to just think about it right away right same value looks different that's that whole concept around what makes equivalent and so a really good example of that that i always like to put is money we like money so if we had like a $1 bill, right? It's green, it's paper, it's got a guy's face on it. It's worth $1. You go into the store, it's worth a dollar. Totally works that way. Now, if we thought about equivalent, we think about, well, what looks different than a dollar but actually has the exact same value as a dollar? Where can I go into the store with something that is worth a dollar but it is not a dollar bill, it looks different. So that could be quarters, right? Like if I had four quarters, then this also looks different, but altogether my four quarters is also a dollar. So that's really what it means to be equivalent, right? These things that look different but have the exact same value. Uh, here's four, but it has a value of four. Well, three plus one looks different than four, but it has the exact same value. Those are equivalent, right? Like this is that concept of really thinking about what all of this means. So we're gonna kind of dive into how do then do we think about equivalent fractions, right? How do we have fractions that look different but have the exact same value? They carry the same amount. So let's start with this one over here. We have one half, right? So one of the things I said is looks different. So modeling is going to be the key here. So I'm going to first start and I'm going to model one half. I'm just going to create one half. So boom. Let's see, take my whole partition into two pieces, shade in one of the pieces. Okay, well, there's my model, there's one half. Now, I wanna take this one half and I wanna make it look different. Like, let's just make it look different without, though, changing the value. So what I mean by not changing the value is I'm not gonna shade any more and I'm not gonna shade any less, right? The amount that's shaded of this model, this rectangle, if you will, is going to stay the same, but we're going to change the way the model looks. And that all comes down to partitioning, right? So look here. Boom. Just partition right down the middle. Now that I've done that, look at our model. It's now, instead of being cut into two pieces, it's been cut into four pieces, right? One, two, three, four. So this has four pieces. And then, if, again, we look at how many are shaded. Look. I have one shaded and I have two shaded now. So that's two fourths. So that's equivalent. One half and two fourths are the exact same thing. They have the same value, but they look different. Okay? So let's continue to try this out. We have three fourths. What would be an equivalent fraction for three fourths? Well, again, we want it to look different, right? Have a different look. So first, let's model three fourths so we know what three fourths looks like. Partition it into four pieces, shade three. One, two, three. Okay, now we gotta make this look different. So we're gonna partition it equally in a different way. So let's see here. What if I went right here? Okay, so if we stop and look at that, we ask ourselves, have I partitioned it into equal pieces? And actually the answer here is no, because this piece over here is a lot smaller than this piece over here, right? So we have to be wary of the way that we uh, think about the way that we partition our pieces, right? So let me try that again. So instead of partitioning it just once there, let's see, what if I went boom, boom. Okay, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces now. Now you see how I've done that? I partitioned this into eight different pieces. Well, how much of that is shaded now? Originally, there's three parts 
sections that were shaded, but after partitioning it and making it look different, well, what's the value, right? One, two, three, four, five, six of them are shaded. So there you go. Three fourths, six eighths are equivalent fractions. They're absolutely equivalent. They're the same thing. All right, one more. Let's do one fourth. So quickly, model one fourth. Boom, boom. Do, 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 do. Shade it in. Okay, I want to make this look different. I'm going to partition it, right? I'm going to cut it into equal pieces. Everything's got to be equal here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go here. And now I'm going to get crazy. Let's partition it here and here because there are no rules how many times I cut it. The only thing that's important, the only rule is that all my pieces that I partition into are the same size because that's the whole idea about fractions and getting equal pieces, right? So now that I've done that, let's look at how many pieces I've created. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pieces. And now 1, 2, 3, 4 of them are shaded. So 1 fourth and 4 sixteenths are the same. And that's what's so cool about equivalent fractions, right? Like if we have a good understanding of that, if someone came along and said, hey, I'll give you one fourth of a million dollars or four sixteenths of a million dollars, I'd be like, hey, I'll take either of them. They're exactly the same, right? So that's a pretty good thing to know and have. I mean, in mathematics as well. No one's ever actually asked me about giving me a million dollars, but maybe one day they will. And if so, I'll know what to answer. So that's how we take a fraction and we could think about how do we make it equivalent. Well, what about whole numbers? Whole numbers actually can be written as an equivalent fraction. We can write a whole number as a fraction, and again, they'll be equivalent because they will look different, but it will be the same thing. Well, again, here's one. That's one. That's one, and I have it all, right? Because I just have one, so I'm gonna shade it all in. Well, what does that look like as a fraction? Well, let's think about that denominator, like how many pieces did I cut it into? Well, I didn't really cut it or partition it into any piece. It's just one piece. And how much of it is shaded? Well, all of it, one. So the number one can be written as one over one. Like, that's the same thing, they're equivalent. What's also tricky about the number one, and this really come in handy with one, is if I think about however many pieces I do want to partition it into, let's say I partition it into four pieces. Well, in order for it to be one, that means I have to shade in four. So one is pretty tricky. The whole number one can have a lot of equivalent fractions to go with it because I could have one is equal to one over one. That's true. It could be two over two, right? Because I could take a whole and cut it into two pieces and shade both of them and that would still be one. It could be three over three, four over four, and I hope you're starting to see that. Truth is that however many pieces I cut it into, if I shade all of them, if I have them all, that is just one. So 100 over 100, although that's a really big looking number, that's still just one because I took one, I cut it into 100 pieces, and then I just shaded in all 100 pieces. So that works really well with one. Those are how the number one can be written as an equivalent fraction. But then I ask you this, like, well, what about these other whole numbers? They also have equivalent fractions, right? Three has an equivalent fraction. 10 has an equivalent fraction. So what does that look like? Well, again, Equivalent, looks different, same value. So let's first see what three looks like. Well, three would look like three holes, right? Three is just three holes. So let's shade that in. One, two, three, okay? So let's think about that as a fraction. Once again, like the one, if you think about what it was partitioned into, it really wasn't partitioned into. It's just one big square, one square. And how many of those squares did we shade in? Three. So three over one is the same thing as three. So same thing here. Oh boy, 10, are you kidding me? Okay, I'll go fast here. That means I have 10 holes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, okay? None of them have cut into anything. It's just one square that I've created. And then I would shade, because I have 10 of them, I'm shading in all 10 of them. So that's 10 over one. And I hope you're starting to see there's a cool little trick here because any whole number written as an equivalent fraction is that whole number over one. Um, uh, let's see, 13. Well, as a fraction, that's 13 over one because that would just be 13 whole squares colored in, right? So that's really cool. Like these are the things that are really helpful when we think about equivalent. But now we do got to think about what's coming up next. And what's coming up next is this idea 
of mixed numbers and top heavy fractions. So get your paper ready. All right, so mixed numbers, top heavy fractions. Again, thinking about this idea of equivalent, right? They are equivalent. They will look different, but they will carry the same value. So we wanna talk about what that means. So first let's talk about what is a mixed number. Well, it is just that. It is a mix between a whole number and a fraction, right? Well, number, I should say. So in this case, our whole number is three and the fraction is one third. So there's your mixed number. It is a three and one third, right? Because it has whole numbers and fractions together. A top heavy fraction is really what it refers to there because when we think about fractions, fractions have numerators on the top and they have a denominator on the bottom. So if I have a top heavy fraction, that just means my numerator, the top, is gonna to be larger than the denominator, the number will be larger. So for example, maybe uh, 10 fourths, let's just say. That's top heavy, because as you can see again, the numerator 10 is larger than the denominator four, okay? So that's what this means, but then we gotta think about, well, how do we write them equivalent? How do we convert is the term? How do we change them? How do we take a mixed number and write an equivalent top heavy fraction? Or how do we take a uh, top heavy fraction and write an equivalent mixed number. And that's what we're going to look at right now. So let's dive into that. Everything we've been doing so far with equivalent is all about the idea of making something look different. So in order for it to look different, I got to model it. So here's three and one third. So I have three holes. So as we talked about earlier, like the number three, how do we model that? It's a fraction. Well, there's three holes. And according to the fraction I have, right? The denominator says I've taken these holes and I've partitioned them into three parts because it's three. That's what the denominator says. So each one of these is three. And then I have all of these, right? I have them all, so they're all shaded in because that's one hole, two holes, and three holes. Again, holes, all of them, not holes like in the ground, right? That's a different term. I don't have three holes here. I have three holes. Just clarify as always I always want to make sure that's clear okay so we have three holes and then we still have this other fraction this one-third so I got to model that as well so boom boom partition into three pieces and then I'm gonna shade in one okay well great we just got to count how many pieces we have we know everything's been split into thirds right that's our denominator that's one cool thing to think about it Notice the denominator did not change because we know each one of these is cut into thirds. We just got to count how many thirds we have. Like how many are there? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So this is ten thirds. So three and one third is the same thing as ten thirds. They're equivalent. So that's how we could show them. Notice mixed number, top heavy fraction. So let's take it the other way. Right, let's go the other way around. Um, and let's just say, let me create a little space here for us, draw here. Let's take a top heavy fraction. Let's say I have nine fourths. Okay, so again, if we want to write this as a mixed number, we got to be able to model what nine fourths looks like first and then think about how we can convert into a mixed number. Well, that just means that my whole is cut into four or partitioned into four pieces, right? So four pieces, there you go, one, two, three, four. And my numerator says, well, that's how many I've shaded in. I have nine of them shaded in, so let's, let's do that. Uh, one, two, three, four, but I need nine. So that just means I gotta create another hole. So try to make it the same size. Partition it again into fours, right? Cause that's what the denominator says and then shade in some more. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But we need nine, so I'm gonna make a whole nother hole, whole nother hole, and partition it into four pieces, and we gotta shade in what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so if we thought about this as a mixed number, we're first gonna look at how many whole numbers do I have? How many were shaded in completely, right? So this was shaded in completely, so there's one. This was shaded in completely, so there's one. So one plus one, 
and then this is just 1 fourth. So if we put all that together, well, 1 plus 1 is 2 and 1 fourth. Okay, so that's like mixed numbers and top heavy, like how we convert and put them back and forth. So let's just put all this to practice, everything we've talked about. So the first thing here, step one, right? Two equivalent fractions for one half. Great, so I already start doing that, right? I'm gonna work along with you. Let's think about what we need to do. Equivalent, going to have the same value but look different. So the first thing I'm gonna do is model one half. Okay, now we just need to partition this up. Well, as long as my pieces are the same, I could do this. That's two fourths. So there's one, but it says I gotta do two. So there's one, two fourths is equivalent. So let's see, let's do another one. I'm gonna do it underneath here. So again, one half. Now I have to partition it differently than into fourths like I did. So let's see here. What if we went boom and boom? Are those pieces the same? Yes. So now I have six pieces and three are shaded. So there would be two answers. There's two equivalent fractions to one half. One half is the same thing as two fourths, which is the same thing as three six. They are all equivalent. So that would be that piece. That was cool. I hope that felt good. We'll just keep practicing, don't worry. All right, let's see. What is the equivalent fraction for these whole numbers? Okay, well again, if we remember that whole idea of modeling these, when you think about, well, how many do I have? I have five, four, five right and how many pieces are they cut into well they aren't right so I just have it and then there's five of them so five over one and I can take that trick to all whole numbers it's just the number over one here's two over one and one over one those would all be correct answers with one remember one's a little tricky I could also say four over four that equals one because it's however many pieces I partition into. So one's kind of the tricky. I wouldn't even say it's tricky, it just has lots of different answers that would be equivalent. But here, that's what I got. Two over one, five over one. If it gave me 10, it would be 10 over one. So feeling good about that, right? Equivalent at fractions at turning uh, whole numbers into equivalent fractions, right? Uh, let's see, convert. So we're gonna change, right? Mix numbers into top heavy fractions. Okay, cool, we just did something like this. So it looks like both of these are mixed numbers. Okay, so let's model first. So I have th three holes. And according to the denominator, they're each cut into halves. Okay, so I have all those, because I have three, so I have to shade in all three of these. And then I got one half left over, so I'll just model one half. And let's just count how many pieces that is now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And all of them are cut into halves, so my denominator doesn't change, right? They're still halves, and I had seven of them. So seven and halves is the same thing as three and one half. They're equivalent, same deal. Okay, so same idea here. Let's model out four holes, because that's my whole number. It's a mixed number. Each one is partitioned into thirds, and then, so that's my four holes, and then I have two thirds. So we actually first, I guess, shade all these in. Sorry, I should have done that. So there's one, two, three, four. Oh, excuse me. One, two, three, four, and now two thirds. Okay. And then we just want to count out how many pieces we have, right? There's three in each one of these. So three, six, nine, twelve. 13, 14. So I have 14 shaded pieces, and they've all been cut into thirds. So that's how we would be able to put those two together. So I really want to thank you for this hard work. It's a lot, but notice with all the work that you're doing, all those packets that are in front of you and, and the assignments that you've been working on, you're going to need to know this stuff and work on it. So let's keep up the good work. I appreciate everything that you're doing here. Let's think about equivalent and converting and all those other pieces. And again, Let's take a little time out and play a game. Okay, so it's game time, right? We've been working super hard on all this equivalent fraction stuff, and I really appreciate what you're doing. So let's take a little break, play a game that I like to call Fraction Frenzy. You're going to need paper, something to write with, 
a deck of cards, and we'll kind of explain about how we're gonna use the cards in that deck, and then an opponent. Today I got Golden Pig as my opponent, so the two of us are gonna take on a game of Fraction Frenzy. To get your cards ready, I would really suggest you just take digits one through six for now. And again, remember one can be that ace, right? So digits one through six. That means you can get rid of face cards and jokers and other pieces for this. You're not gonna need those. You can set those aside. So let's get our materials ready and let's get ourselves going. All right, so here we are. We're all set up for Fraction Frenzy. Golden Pig and myself will be taking this on. To start this game, we're working with fractions. You and your partner are really just gonna decide what the denominator is you want for the game. So Golden Pig and I have already decided on force, so we're gonna be thinking about force. But you could do this with thirds, right? You could play this game in fifths, however you want to do it. I think force is a pretty good way to start. You could also start with halves, but we're gonna to focus today on force for this round. Now in this game, each opponent goes five times, and the object is to get as much as you can after five rounds, so I wanna get as much as I can for my five rounds, and I want my score to be higher than Golden Pigs. So let me show you how that works. I'm just gonna model my round. So I'm not gonna play for Golden Pig, we just have to pretend that after my first round, Golden Pig would go, and then my second round, Golden Pig would go, and that's how it works with your opponent. But you're gonna take your deck of cards, and you can go ahead and have that face down. We'll just put that there. And again, we're working with force, so I'm gonna start by modeling round one. I'm gonna flip over the top card, and the first thing I see is a five. So this is my numerator. So this is pretty good, I like this, it's a good way to start. So I got five fourths for my first round. So I gotta model that and think about what that means. So five fourths, and we've been talking about that. So I'm gonna take my whole, the denominator tells me I'm gonna partition it into four parts, and I have five of them. So here's one, two, three, four. That means I gotta make another whole, and five. So there's five fourths, so that was a good round for me. So Golden Pig would go, do the same thing, right? Again, working in force, now it's my turn. So I am going to go round two. I'm gonna flip that over, and I see this time my numerator is two, so I have two force. So I'm gonna go ahead and model that. So again, I'm still partitioning into force, that's what we're doing this whole game, because we decided on that. And I'm shading in two, okay? So this looks good. Now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish out my five rounds so we can see what it looks like at the end. Again, remember, we're just pretending that in between each one of these rounds, your opponent would go, right? You just take turns. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out. Let's see what we do here. Okay, so I went ahead and did my five rounds so we could see how it works at the very end of things. So what's gonna happen at this point is, I said after five rounds, we wanna see who has the most. So I gotta take all of these pieces and put them together, right? I'm gonna add all my fractions up to get my final score. So one way I can do that is I definitely know that we are working in fours, so I could look at how many fours I have total shaded. So I'll count those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. That's 22 fours, but I'm gonna have to put that into a mixed number. So let's do that, because we were talking about that earlier today. So again, I have my holes, and they're being cut into fours, right? So each one of these is four. I have 22 of them. So here's four, eight. Notice I'm just counting by fours, because each one of these is four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be 12. This is looking good for me. 16, 20, and then I need two fours left over, so boom. So that means my final score would be one hole, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and two fours. And again, in between each round, Golden Pig would also be going, and we would just compare scores at the end. Uh, this game is a ton of fun. You can also play this by yourself. Like You can just play out rounds and just see what your highest score is. And again, at the start of each game, you and your opponent will decide like what is the denominator we're going to use. So I hope that was a lot of fun.
All right, well, what a day. Thank you so much for your time and everything you did here. Uh, we activated our brains and got going with that number talk. That was a lot of fun. And then we really got in deep diving into those equivalent fractions. And I appreciate the hard work with that and thinking about what equivalent is, right? Not only in fractions, but with numbers themselves. And then we were able to play Fraction Frenzy. I gotta say, I really appreciate this time. And I know that it's still kind of hard not being able to be at school and see our teachers and our classmates and all that. Um, but I do appreciate you coming and being a part of this, and I know that when all of this is over, I really hope that we pass each other in a hallway and you say hello. Thanks for all your hard work. We'll see you later.